let's look at how to configure Cisco routers using PPP and PAP or the PPP authentication protocol. So I have a couple of routers right here, router one and router two. These routers don't have any serial cards. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the router and add a serial card. So right here, drag it in and power it up. And I do the same thing with the other one over here. I power it down. I take this serial card, drop it in there, power it up. And I switch to the command line. All right. So these routers first need to be configured. So there's no name on it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. So I go into the privilege mode. And I do conf t. This is going to be router one. So I do host name r1. It's important to make sure you remember your host name because you need that for later parts of your configuration. Host name r2. All right. So once I have them configured, I want to go ahead and drag my line across. So I go down here and I grab this and I'm going to take serial 010 all the way over to serial 010. Now the line is across and it's time to configure these devices. So the first thing I want to do is create a username. And this is the username for the other router to use to log in. So because this is router one, I need to create a username for router two. So I type in username r2 and I need a password and I'll just call it Cisco. So they both want to have the same password and on the other side I'll do the same thing. So I can say username this is for r1 and I'm going to have my password also be the same one so that things will work. All right. So now I have both of these up and they're both configured with their usernames. The next step is to turn on my authentication. So I go into my interface. So S0 slash one slash zero. And I need to tell it I'm doing PPP authentication. So I do PPP. Actually, I want to probably do the encapsulation first. So I do encapsulation PPP. And then I do PPP authentication PAP. All right, now that I have encapsulation set to PPP and I have the PPP authentication set to PAP, I can go ahead and set up my authentication to authenticate across. So I'm going to be authenticating to the other machine and I'm abusing my PPP PAP sent username, sent username, and this will be my username. So R1 and the password, which is Cisco. All right, now I'm going to do the other side. So I go over here and I once again need to make sure I have my encapsulation set to, oh, I need to go in the interface in S0 slash 1 slash 0. My encapsulation is set to P, PPP and my PPP authentication set to PAP and I'm going to use my PPP BPAP sent username and this is R2 so R2 password Cisco. At this point I could activate the interfaces and it should be able to authenticate but I don't have any IP addresses in place so I want to do that too. Um, so I do IP address and I'll do 192.168.0.2 with a slash 24 subnet or network mask. And then I'll do no shut to bring it up. And I do the same thing on the other side with a different IP address. So I do IP address 192.168.0.1.255.255.255.0. And I do a no shut to bring it up here. At this point, the interfaces should be live and I should be able to ping all the way across. So I'll do a do ping 192.168.0.2 and it can ping all the way across and I am live. 
And that is how you configure the PPP authentication protocol or PAP on Cisco routers.